This is The Soul Garden, presented by me, Georgina Langdale, for the Centre for Nature Connection, and it's where we get to explore nature, compassion and soul through the inner and outer workings of living in a connected world. Hi there, I hope that um, you're feeling well today and at one with the world. I um, want to spend some time today talking about somebody who I just, I I have to say I adore, and his name is Marsilio Ficino, and he uh, lived from 1433 to 1499 in Florence. Now, I'm really interested in in digging through ancient wisdom and history and um, the writings of philosophers and mystics and and healers and sages and alchemists because I think that um, within their writings there is a lot of really, really valuable stuff to help us with life today. And Ficino is absolutely, for me, um, one of the guys at the top of that tree. He lived in Florence and he was under the patronage of the Medici family. Um, Initially, uh, Cosimo de Medici and down through, um, handed down the family to the grandson Lorenzo, the great um, Medici. And this was a time in Florence where um, the Renaissance was really um, being birthed, if you'll excuse the pun. And I do think that Ficino um, played a big part in that. Florence was becoming this kind of cultural hub. And Ficino, uh, he had been studying to be a physician, but... um, in those days, when you were studying to be a physician, you you looked at um, the humanities, you studied the humanities, and you studied astrology. In fact, um, way, way, way back, Hippocrates said, you know, you cannot be a physician if you do not know the stars. So Ficino really um, wrote a lot about working with the stars, working with the idea of cosmos, but also um, he fell in love with Plato and he became a foremost um, scholar translating Plato's works from ancient Greek into Latin. And uh, with that came all of these Neoplatonic ideas which really fed the Renaissance. Interestingly as well, at that time in the late 1400s, plague was still swirling around Europe. Um, And at the end of the 15th century, there was really a time of plague, great social unrest, um, widening gap between rich and poor, Also, there had been a a, a kind of flourishing uh, and a uh, democratization, in a way, of the written word, thanks to Herr Gutenberg inventing the printing press. And so you started to see uh, people like Martin Luther and stuff using this new communication technology. Erasmus uh, was another great uh, thinker of the time to, um, to get their their points of view across. In many ways, it was a kind of cultural um, communication revolution that, like we have seen in our lifetimes with the internet. So within this, Marsilio uh, was translating Plato's text. He was a physician, and later he became a priest. He started um, to be known, in fact, I think he even called himself a, a physician of the soul, such a beautiful term, the soul doctor. He really captured the idea of our health and well-being being seen in the context of our relationship with nature and cosmos. So cosmos was this idea of a a well-ordered universe, and the universe has everything we need within it for life. Um, Ficino would also say that we are stardust, So for Ficino, he would see you and your relationship 
uh, in nature and cosmos. So he looked at your astrological affinities or tensions. He looked at the herbs and the flowers and the trees and the fruits that can support you or create balance within your physical and emotional needs. And uh, he would also look at um, what gemstones could uh, help with your healing and well-being and also music. So he was he was a kind of ecotherapist, art therapist, um, music therapist. So if you went to go and see um, Massilio Ficino as your physician, he would um, do your astrological chart and then he would be looking at what are the astral influences that are influencing your physical constitution and your soul and how can we uh, balance things out or augment the things that are really positive and um, kind of ameliorate things, uh, influences that maybe could be creating tensions for you. He would also then look at um, what are the herbs and the plants and, and what is the medicine we're going to work with for you from nature, from plants and trees and things. And again, some of that um, medicinal picture would be related to those plants' own astrological alignments. And then he would look at what is the music, what is the cosmic or what are the cosmic notes, the notes of the cosmos that will bring healing and balance into your um, body and soul. So he would um, compose music on his lyre for you and he would uh, pluck those cosmic notes, the notes on the lyre related and the strings related to each of the planets. Just a beautiful, beautiful way of working. He would tell you then you need to spend time at night in a scented garden to uh, feed your soul and spirit with this elixir of these aromas from nature. He would work with am amulets, so he would look at what are the gemstones that will draw down the astral influences that are going to um, help you. He would also say, what are the images, what is the art that you have around you? Because what you what you're looking at, the colors of your walls, your clothes, all of these things will affect your sense of well-being. So um, he would be encouraging you to think really carefully about what it is, what are the images and things that you're looking at. I think that's really interesting in today's world. I'm sure he'd have a fit if he saw the video games and the TV shows and everything with so much violence and crime and um, just uh, so many really um, negative images that we're being fed the whole time, he would see that um, that would be um, contributing to a, a lack of balance or um, a lack of well-being really quite sensible I think he would say you know go and look at a beautiful sunset go and walk in nature um, put a beautiful um, work by Leonardo da Vinci on the wall or something he would um, he had a very um, holistic view of how you treat your body how you treat your soul um, how you treat yourself and how you treat and curate in a way the um, lived environment. So I first came across Marsilio Ficino oh, quite a few years ago now. I was very interested in Paracelsus. He was born at the um, end of the 15th century and um, and lived to about um, 1535 or something. Anyway, I'll talk about him in another episode. But he, uh, his writings led me back towards um, Marsilio Ficino. And um, 
a really classic work of of Massilio Ficino's is the three books on life and this is just a fantastic read uh, you can get it I I got my um, copy of it that is in Latin and in English and it's just wonderful I took a really deep dive into that I also read a book by the wonderful Thomas More who uh, is a was a monk um, and uh, is a Jungian and just the most gorgeous person really um, and he wrote a book called uh, Planets Within which uh, he wrote about Marsilio Ficino in I don't know the late 70s maybe early 80s wonderful another wonderful book that um, he delves into Marsilio as a man and also as this um, physician of the soul Since discovering Ficino, I've worked with his ideas in in a in a myriad of ways. He really um, weaves his way into so much of the things I do. So um, I do these Renaissance readings. So I, I kind of think of it as being Ficino. Uh, a client will come to me. I will do their chart, just like he would have done. And then I'm looking at what are those, um, where are those, uh, and then I look at what um, astral influences can you can work with to help you um, get soul aligned, I don't know, in purpose and work and in life. And I then take it another step further and I look at... Um, at how he would have applied that in a constitutional way to, to look at somebody and then I look at the plants that may um, become part of that soul medicine for them so I'm looking at their astrological influences as well and I make um, plant essences, flower essences and I will make them with according to different um, planetary and lunar transits and I will can put things together for a person that can really um, pluck those cosmic cords for them to help um, support them in these really crazy times. So I love doing that. It is a really beautiful um, deep dive that helps somebody see themselves as part of nature and cosmos and work with the strengths and the opportunities that that um, view of themselves um, enables. We're in the age of what the great resignation at the moment, so a lot of people are thinking about what is it I really want to do now? You know, I'm not happy or I've had this amazing career, but I don't feel like my soul is being fed. Well, this work I do with Ficino can often help people get unstuck around that and start to really identify a very soul aligned path for them. This idea of Ficino's about um, looking at his relationship with nature and cosmos or, or a patient of his relationship with nature and cosmos, I absolutely love. And in his um, work, The Three Books on Life, he, he really digs into uh, the, the astral qualities of different plants and gemstones and um, the impacts of, of different planetary influences on somebody and I just absolutely love it so what I decided to do was kind of reflect that back at him in a way and I have um, a range of creations that I call um, the Atelier Signatum Naturalis, the, the studio of the um, natural signatures I have made a, a range of things, uh, a range dedicated to Marsilio Ficino, one to Paracelsus and one to Hildegard of Bingen. Oh my God, I love those people. So what I've done is I've looked at Ficino and then I have looked at what are the plants and the aromatics um, 
that will um, capture the idea of Ficino's own soul and own character. What if I make them as a as a an amulet uh, of Ficino for somebody? So I make um, natural perfume. I make uh, a plant essence blend, a cream and a face serum. It's all lovely and decadent and for the skin, but you know, the skin is our largest organ in the body. So I imagine just it's soaking in that picture of Ficino and then finding inspiration from that. I've taken note of his writings on nature as part of his therapy and I just go crazy. So, for example, in the skin serum, um, I've included borage oil because um, Pliny the Elder wrote about borage as being a treatment for melancholia. Ficino had a, a very melancholic temperament. Saturn weighed heavily in his chart. And it, it was his kind of bete noire in a way. And so I looked at what are the plants that help um, balance things like melancholia. The plant essence blend I've made for him, I call it Tranquilitus Emini Flower Elixir. And I thought about it as an elixir for the poetics and pain of creativity. I thought this really um, hit a spot with Ficino. He was a man who was both weighed down and inspired by melancholy. So he saw um, both its pain and its beauty. And he also recognized melancholy as being key to um, deepening his quest of um, the exploration of wisdom and spirit. So I thought about, as I was making this essence, I thought about things like music, you know, and his love of music, that exquisite pain of being held um, in that melancholic ache of a minor chord. You know, it has the power to open our soul to dreaming. It can bring us to tears and revelations and really move spirit within us. So Tranquilitas Anime Flower Elixir I created to support and augment um, this energetic connection to melancholy and inspiration. I, I had this picture of Ficino taking a drop of this elixir upon his tongue before taking up his quill, capturing thought and placing it on the page. I worked with the emotive lunar transits through Gemini that, to capture that pain of melancholy and also the peace of mind that comes with following one's guiding star or dancing to our own cosmic song. I also, at that same transit, that lunar transit through Gemini, I harvested some leaves from a willow tree growing by a stream at a place that has really profound meaning for me. And it's a place I return to for grief and healing. Willow is under the rulership of the moon and Venus. And it's this watery, emotive tree of protection. And I also see it as a tree of release um, because it gives us courage to let our thoughts and hopes and fears float on the waters and be carried downstream. So I used um, willow plant essence within this elixir to help us find beauty even in painful times and to help us um, hear the music of the cosmos around us and within us. It was really beautiful working in this way and thinking of Ficino. I made a perfume for him. Oh, it was so I just love doing this. And it's called Lune Signa Estellus, the light um, of the uh, stars. I really wanted to create an aromatic portrait of Ficino and the plants, planets and places that were medicine for his soul. So I, I thought about those night scented gardens, you know, the, and then the opening and closing of heliotropic plants as they follow the sun, the resinous tears of trees, that fleeting beauty of spirit and dazzle of gemstone. 
in in this um, perfume you get these hints of like gold and saffron and heady rose and narcotic kind of voluptuous of um, a night scented garden like honeysuckle and jasmine and a really deep woody mysterious base that drew on their Saturnian influences and I hope that this really reflects Ficino's thoughts on how aromatics feed the soul and that it it gives a, a an aromatic portrait of Ficino's own internal landscape. Ficino, for me, um, I feel him as a as a minor chord, you know, a beautiful A minor going to something diminished and gorgeous. I um, there's something. There's something really, really tender about him, beautiful and and troubled and conflicted. Um, he had these passionate um, platonic relationships. When I've read his works and his letters, it, it kind of women don't feature that strongly, but there are these intense platonic love affairs that he has with various um, men and it's fascinating when you read um, the stories uh, sorry when you read his letters just beautiful and and exquisitely intense um, a lot of self-doubt <laughs> and wishing for worthiness Ficino um, later in life he nearly um, got done for heresy and when you read the three books on life he talks a lot about astrology and astral influences and things like that and then later on suddenly starts saying well of course I'm just reporting what others say these aren't my views at all and I think he was doing that I suspect to uh, stop being um, put on trial for heresy he was a deeply soulful and compassionate man, I think. This idea, again, of his, of how we work with our natural environment for our well-being and how we think about um, the, the aesthetics of our lived environment, our home, our office, you know, our hospital, our hospice, these things, I think, are incredibly valuable in today's world. There is so much um, negativity coming at us at the moment from everywhere. So in effect, what I hear him saying down through the ages is, do what you can to make your environment as beautiful, as aesthetically as sensually pleasing as you can to help balance out um, or accentuate the positive rather than feed on the negative. I think that is really really valuable for today. Um, anything that we can do to find beauty, peace, calm, healing, um, if we can find the things that really give our soul pleasure that really speak to the soul I think that um, this can really help allay anxieties and fear it can help us find a peace of calm in in turbulent times oh I want there's this lovely quote of his here to give you an idea of how he thought he uh, here's a quote from from his three books on life as the power of our soul is always applied through the spirit, so the power of the world soul is diffused in all things through the quintessence, which flourishes everywhere as spirit within the world body. We can absorb it through more frequent use of things rich in it, things exceptionally pure like choice wine and vinegar, balsam and gold, precious stones, mirablum, things which smell sweet and glitter, especially things with a subtle essence, things warm, moist and clear, 
not only wine, but especially gold or the fragrance of cinnamon and roses. So for him, that is how he would help call in, draw in the power of world soul um, and help it flourish within us as well. So gorgeous. When I think about um, working with Ficino, I, I just feel that he just helps imbue the world with soul. He helps us connect um, to our own soul. He, he opens up the landscape of our interior world. He would talk about us being a microcosm of the macrocosm. So what he's encouraging us to do is work with the beauty of the world outside us to feed um, the, the state of the, the beauty of the world within. And then you can then see how this kind of reflects back on each other. If you are feeling at peace, a kind of beauty way within your soul is being nourished and supported and cared for within it really helps you be able to be better able to bring care and compassion and soul to the work you do out in the world. Really just beautiful wisdom for today's world, I think. Interestingly, also on, on Ficino, one last note, um, uh, a year or so ago, I think it was a year ago, Saturn, Jupiter and Venus were all in the same space, place in the sky uh, as they had been at the time uh, of the end of the 15th century. So all that unrest and plague and stuff and, and this pattern was repeated in the heavens um, at the time of the last US election um, of COVID coming along. Very, very interesting. So for me, um, Ficino has, because of that, that kind of shamanic time traveling, he, he has this immediacy for um, the world we live in right now. I hope you enjoyed that and I look forward to talking to you again soon. If you are interested in finding out more about any of the offerings I talked about in this um, episode, take a look at my website georginalnature.com um, and you'll find things like the soul alignment work I do in the Renaissance readings and if you head to the shop tab you'll find um, the Atelier Signatum and there you'll find the Ficino um, perfumes and elixirs and things that I've, I've mentioned. And every purchase helps support ecological restoration projects. Bye for now.